So I just acquired an Easy UHF RX Nano version. Very small little thing like an inch by an inch. Very nice. But the problem is it came with a new firmware which is 1.53 firmware. And that didn't work with either of my transmitters. So I had to go through a process of upgrading the firmware. So that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you how to upgrade the firmware on both of these transmitters, the JR module and the CAN. I'll even show you how to upgrade the firmware on this, although it doesn't need to be done. And I'll show you how to bind the new Nano to both of these modules. So let's get started. So before I could use my little Nano UHF receiver like this one with my Easy UHF module right here, I guess this is called a CAN, Easy UHF 500 milliwatt CAN, I had to upgrade the firmware on the CAN. So when the uh, transmitter is in low power like this and you hold the button, you'll actually go into bind mode, which is not what we really want. And you'll hear steady beeps like that, which is wrong. That's mine mode. We want to upgrade the firmware, so that's the wrong mode to be in. So I'll stop it. I'll switch the switch to high. Wait a minute. i got to hold the button in. And then plug in the USB cord. Okay, now we immediately get a flashing light. That's what we want. Okay, so it's plugged in the USB cord. It is not powered in any way, just off the USB. Okay, now we want to upgrade the firmware. So that's under program right here. And before we update the firmware, we have to get the firmware from uh, Easy UHF. And I've already downloaded it and put it on my computer, but I won't get into that. That's easy enough to do. Uh, now what I need to do is find the 1.53 firmware for the TX500 right here. I'm not going to use the UK version, using the English version. I mean the uh, American version. There we go. Got that. Now I'll just click open and you'll see it start programming it. Make sure this checkbox up here is non because you you want to take off any settings that were there before and just do a fresh install. Okay, now we've got success, and we can just go ahead and unplug the USB cable. Now if I plug the USB cable back in, I can check the firmware version. So let's just go ahead and do that, and I'll just read settings. Okay, it didn't connect yet because I don't have the driver up here yet. There it is. Now, now it's there, I can read the settings. Sorry about the shakiness of this video. I just got the camera on my lap and it's kind of shaky. But Okay, so it read it and I've got 1.53, which is what I need. That's the one that works with the Nano UHF receiver. Okay, I'm going to bind my Easy UHF transmitter module. This is the box version. What they call the 500 milliwatt. And I'm going to bind it to the Nano Easy UHF receiver. Make sure the Easy UHF is on low power right here. Then hold the bind button in and plug in the power. So holding the button in now you should get steady beeps like that. So low power and steady beeps. You hold the button in and then plug in the power. So up at the computer I have my Nano Easy UHF right here. I'll just go ahead and unplug it for now. But Okay so I've unplugged it and now I'm just going to plug it in. I'm not going to hold in the button at all. Just going to plug it straight into the USB port and the light will be flashing rapidly. Okay, now, provided we have the device driver installed, you should see this come up on the screen, which is the device driver name, COM port 7. But now we should be able to click the bind button. So, 
clicking the bind button and you can see the wheel spinning there and then we'll just wait and here's what this is doing see the light starting to blink slow now and it says bind successful okay so just a slow blinking light I like to get that in frame but there we go slow blinking light and the message says binding succeeded remove USB cable and cycle power on both RX and TX so I'll go ahead and do that let's close this message unplug it like that okay now we'll go ahead and cycle the power on the radio alright so now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the power to it alright now we'll go ahead and plug it back in alright so you heard that beep 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 and then beep that means it's all set okay now I've plugged my receiver into my test board here. I've got a flight controller here. I just plugged it in. It's in PPM mode that we configured earlier. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the battery. So let's see here. There we go. All right. And now the, the light was blinking really fast, but now it's blinking slow, meaning I have a connection. I have a bind right there. So that's how we bind it using the computer. Now if we want to check to see if it's working, you could check that through the uh, through the flight controller and just see if your sticks work and if they move the servos or whatnot. Or you can use clean flight or whatever you're using. Clean flight, beta flight, whatever you happen to have. Let's do that. Let's put in a USB cable here and we'll plug that into the computer get back here okay so let's bring up clean flight there it is I'll go ahead and connect okay now let's just check our receiver tab and you can see if I move the radio sticks you can see things happening right there. So I know my Nano Easy UHF receiver is working. So let's update the firmware on the JR module, the Easy UHF JR module, so we can make that compatible with the Nano RX. And this one happens to have a high low switch as well, so we need to have it in the high position. To do the firmware update so we'll do that and then we'll plug in the USB cable which is right here on the front okay but we don't have a flashing light because we didn't hold the button in so let's do it again I'll press the button and then plug it in and now the light is flashing and that's what we want okay now let's go ahead and we're gonna go over here and choose the same one we did for the can it's the easy UHF TX 500 milliwatt that's the can 2 watt and then the JR module is this one right here so all three of them are in the same one so we'll just select that again I apologize for the camera wiggle it's on my lap all right, so now we want to go to program, the program tab here, to update the firmware. And now keep in mind, if this does, button doesn't work, it means you need to update the driver. Same path that you installed the immersion tools in. That's where your driver will be. And they have it right here, actually. They have a little description and where to get that driver if you need it and install it in Device Manager if you need it. I've already done it. Okay, so we click the button. Now we're looking for the JR version. 
here it is right here TXJR module firmware and this is 1.53 which works with the Nano RX okay so let's open that make sure this box isn't checked again we want to just do a complete flash okay then you heard that beep 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 that that means it's done and the light stopped flashing it's now on solid so now we're done and we can unplug it from the USB port and put it back in the Tyrannus radio okay so now let's bind the Tyrannus JR module to the Nano RX and to do that we need to be in low right there and then hold the button down while turning on the radio welcome to Tyrannus Okay, what we need is a series of beeps. Okay, there's the steady beeping that we're looking for. Okay, so that's ready to bind. Now we'll go up here. And I've already plugged in the battery right here to my flight controller. And I've got this Nano RX hooked up with PPM mode. Just got that one cable on there. What I'm going to do is hold the button in. See, is you see a rapid flashing at first. Hold the button in and it should go out. Then if you wait it'll come back with a slow flashing if it binds. There you go, now it's bound. When you see that slow pulsing, that means you got a bind. Okay, now we can just go ahead and... Well, I'll just leave this going. We'll go ahead and recycle the radio down here. see where the switch is at. The switch is in low where we had it. All right. That's a good position to be. Let's turn it back on. Just see what happens here. One more beep. Okay, so you can see it didn't take probably because I didn't cycle the power on the receiver. So let's go ahead and do that. Unplug it. Okay plug back in. Now let's turn on the radio. Welcome to Toronto's. See if it works this time. Micro mode. And it worked. So you have to cycle the power on both of them after you bind. So now you see I have that slow pulsing light and that means I'm bound. Let's go ahead and check it and uh, so I have to have the battery plugged in already and then I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB cable. Let me go ahead and close the immersion tools and bring up clean flight. Okay, battery in first, then the USB cable. Okay, I'm going to go up here and connect. And we're connected. Now let's go to the receiver and we'll see if our stuff is working and you can see it is working so we are bound and we are working now if you need to update the firmware on your Easy UHF Nano receiver uh, I'm going to show you how to do that but mine came with the 1.53 firmware so I don't need to update it but if you did what you do is you hold in the button like so, and then you plug the USB cable in. Just hold the button until it starts flashing rapidly like that and then let go. So that's basically all you have to do. Now you should have the driver already installed and if you don't have the driver installed you can go into device manager and install the driver that's in this path right here. So there's a message about it right here. If you don't have the driver installed you won't get a live update button and you can't click it but I've already done that so I'm just gonna go ahead and click it and then you go to where your software is stored your firmware that is your firmware files and you can either pick one of these uh, nano race s bus ones or if you're like me using PPM you can come down here and pick the RX nano one that's just straight PPM and uh, that's what I did I used this one
and then you click open and it'll start installing the firmware but I'm not going to do that because I've already done it before and it just installs like the other modules that I showed you with a progress bar and then when it gets done it'll say successful and you can unplug it so that's it